So this is the third day in a row bees have been at this box. So they have officially moved in. These are not scout bees. Uh, a swarm has moved in that uh, box. We're going to transfer uh, these bees to that box right over there. My plan was to move this whole box at once. In other words, just lift it off of the hook. But I just used, I don't know if you can see through there, that hook is just an old hook. It's like what you would hang ladders with in the garage. And I made my two mistakes. Number one was that I'm about a foot too far up this tree. And so that presents a problem because of the combination of the height of my ladder and my personal height. And so it would help if it was about a foot or a foot and a half closer to the ground. But also I'm going to use a different kind of hook next time so that I can just lift it off more easily. That one, the box just weighs too much for me to lift it off and do it without uh, scaffolding set up under it. So I'll do better next time. But in the meantime, what we're going to have to do this time, we'll just have to pull a frame at a time and move it out of this box and put it over there in that one. The hope is this is a fairly calm bunch. We'll find out shortly. here. We'll look to see if we see a queen. We got them in there in the first frame. You can see they had added onto the bottom because that swarm trap is deeper than a deep hive. is laying well. I'll look for her real quick on here. She was out of room, we needed to move her. We were a couple of weeks too late.
suspicioning the queen is in this mass somewhere. But that frame had gotten jostled to the side and there were five frames in there and it would hold six. So this outer frame is frankly just a mess. I'm going to have to clean it up. Make sure I don't hurt the queen in the process. She's, I see her now. She's up in that wad right up in there, so I did see her. I she had her hide in there. Problem is, I'm going to cut some comb off of the other side. I'm going to try to clean up this comb a little bit. One thing I'm going to do is I'm putting a combed out frame from the freezer in here. Try to give her somewhere to lay right away. Okay, we got one frame of brood in here. They will reattach it. I'll just hang it inside. They will finish it off. And especially because it's brood, they'll take care of it. And then uh, they'll chew away the rubber bands.
and then just above where there's brood trying to get this crazy comb out I can stick it on another frame They'll clean up that honey. I'll take some of that residue and put it in a frame. And what I did is took some bits and pieces of comb, just kind of wedged them in there. Again, they'll fix that up and reuse it. put that in there there's a little bit of honey in there main thing is there's some brood I wanted to save you will just slide it in there and they'll clean it up so I just took some miscellaneous frame and wedged it up in there and I'll come back in a month and that should be one solid piece of paper. you can see rubber bands there on the front of this hive box this is the swarm that I caught in my swarm trap. I put it in this box, I guess two weeks ago, maybe two and a half weeks ago. But there were some frames that had extra comb on the bottom because the depth of this swarm capture box, it's much deeper than a typical deep box. And so I waited a little bit too long to move them. Because of that, I had wax that extended so far down it would no longer fit in this box. So I cut that off and I put it inside empty frames and used rubber bands to hold it in place. And so they did what they typically do. They will reattach those pieces of comb to the wood and then they chew the rubber band in two. And so what they've done is they've chewed it in two and drug it out on the front porch of the hive. There's the queen. She was inside, unless there's two of them. I thought I saw one earlier, but that's a queen right there. And I didn't. In the evidence they were swarming, so I'll put her in the box. Okay, the queen is now down in there. So hopefully they will start fanning. I'd noticed the bees that were on that lid over there that were around that queen had started fanning. So she's inside there. So hopefully they'll start fanning and draw the rest of them in. Okay, notice something. This is a Amish made swarm trap and it worked well. I had five frames in it. Uh, some of them were already combed out. As you look at that, it's basically a double deep in size. So you can see why if you leave it too long, you'll end up with comb being added to the bottom. And so that was one of the mistakes I made on this one. Now there are a couple of reasons that it took me so long to get them into a regular hive. One is I had uh, been traveling and when I came back, I saw bees hovering around this swarm box up there on that tree. I thought they were scout bees. In fact, 
I went looking around the farm and I'm just at the upper end of the field where most of my beehives are. And in that direction, I actually found a swarm on a little tree out in the middle of that field. <laughs> But after I got that swarm I caught, moved into a hive, I then noticed a day or so later, I was walking by and noticed there were still bees at this box. And what I discovered was that the bees I saw were not scout bees trying to find a new home. This colony had already moved in. And those were just forager bees bringing food back and forth. And so they had been in there, they'd already moved in when I discovered them. A lesson learned from this for me is number one, I'm going to put my box about a foot, foot and a half lower down than I did. I'm going to put it on a hook or a peg that is easier to get it off of, yet still is secure. And I'm not going to wait so long to transfer them over into a regular hive the next time. One of the reasons I like to have some bees at this upper end of the field is that my wife's blueberry bushes are up here. We've got some blueberry bushes, some raspberry bushes. Over there, we've got some more blueberry and blackberry over along the fence. You can't see them really well. But what I like up here is having some bees close by. I will tell you, since we started keeping bees, our blueberries in particular have flourished and we just have some of the biggest blueberries now with just the sweetest taste. They are bigger and sweeter than when we first moved here. So I can tell you from personal experience, it is a good thing to have bees around your blueberries. Now there are still bees up there, but I think there's probably half as many as there were. So they're clearing out and they'll gradually move over with the rest of the colony. It's 8.15 and there are no more bees on that tree. And we look over here at the hive all the bees that were on the outside and were all over the back and were eating all the honey that was out here they're all inside the reason for that is you look there on the front porch you see how they're fanning pheromone they're telling the members of the colony where the queen is. I've really enjoyed having you along with me today. This video has covered the capture of my first swarm in a swarm trap or swarm box. I've caught several swarms before, but this is the first time I've been able to successfully get one to move into one of my swarm traps on their own. I learned a lot in the process, made several mistakes. There are things I will do differently next time, but that's the key to beekeeping is learn and do better the next time. In fact, one thing I want to mention, one side wonderful benefit from doing these videos is that people will watch the videos and periodically will make a comment and tell me something that I shouldn't have done or could have done better or might try in the future. I've learned a great deal from people responding and commenting to my videos. And I'm still new to this, I'm learning. In fact, I've heard a lot of beekeepers who've been doing it for a long time will talk about they're constantly learning. So feel free, if you have had experiences that we can all learn from, feel free to comment on this video and let us know, and we'll just all learn together. But I've really enjoyed beekeeping, and I really enjoyed you joining me today. And even though I made some mistakes, at the end of the day, I have a free colony of bees and free bees. That's never a bad day. You take care and have a blessed day. This is Kirk Brothers from Brother Bees Bees.